The Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. About Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu was an ancient Chinese philosopher. According to Chinese tradition, Lao Tzu lived in the 6th century BC. However, many historians contend that Lao Tzu actually lived in the 4th century BC, which was the period of a hundred schools of thought and warring states period, while others contend but they was, that he was a mythical figure. Lao Tzu was credited with writing the seminal Taoist work, the Tao Te Ching, which was originally known as the Lao Tzu. Tai Shang Lao Jun was a title for Lao Tzu in the Taoist religion. It refers to one of the three pure ones. The Tao, that can be described as not the enduring and unchanging Tao. The name that can be named is not the enduring and unchanging name. Conceived of as having no name, it is the originator of heaven and earth. Conceived of as having a name, it is the mother of all things. Always without desire we must be found. It is deep mystery we, must, we would sound. But if desire always within us be, its outer fringe is all that we shall see. Under these two aspects it is really the same. But as development takes place, it receives the different names. Together we call them the mystery. Where the mystery is the deepest is the gate of all that is subtle and wonderful. All in the world know the beauty of the beautiful, and in doing this they have the idea of what ugliness is. That they all know the skill of the skillful, and, what, and in doing this they have the idea of what the want of skill is. So it is that existence and non-existent give birth, the one to the idea of the other. That difficulty and ease produce the one, the idea of the other. The length and shortness fashion out the one, the figure of the other. That the ideas of height and lowness arise from the contrast of the other with the other. That the musical notes and tones become harmonious through the relation of one another, and that being before and that being before and behind give the idea of one following another. Therefore the sage manages affairs without doing anything, and conveys his instructions without the use of speech. All things spring up, and there is not one which declines to show itself. They grow, and there is no claim made for their ownership. They go through their processes, and there is no expect expectation of a reward for the results. The work is accomplished, and there is no resting in it, as an achievement. The work is done, but how no one can see, tis this what makes the power not cease to be. Not to value and employ men of superior ability is the way to keep the people from rivalry among themselves. Not to prize articles which are difficult to procure is the way to keep them from becoming thieves. Not to show them what is likely to excite their desires is the way to keep their minds from disorder. Therefore the sage, in the exercise of his government, empties their minds, fills their bellies, weakens their wills, and strengthens their bones. He constantly tries to keep them without knowledge and without desire, and where there are those who have knowledge, to keep them from presuming to act on it. When there is the assistance from action, good order is universal. The Tao is like the emptiness of a vessel, and in our employment of it we must be on our guard against all fullness. How deep and unfathomable it is, as if it were the honored ancestor of all things. We should blunt our sharp points and unravel the complication of things. We should, temper, uh, we should attemper our brightness and bring ourselves into agreement with the obscurity of others. How pure and still the Tao is, as if it were ever so continued. I don't know whose son it is. It might appear to have been before God. Heaven and earth do not act from the impulse of any wish to be benevolent. They deal with all things as the dogs of grass are dealt with. The sages do not act from any wish to be benevolent. They deal with the people as the dogs of grass are dealt with. May not the space between heaven and earth be compared to a bellows? Tis empty, yet it loses not its power. Tis moved again, and sends forth air the more. Much speed to swift exhaustion lead we see. 
your inner guard, your inner being guard, and keep it free. The valley spirit dies not, I the same. The female mystery does do we name. Its gate from which at first they issued forth, it's called the root from which they grew heaven and earth. Long and unbroken does, it pow does its power remain. Use gently without the touch of pain. Heaven is long enduring and earth continues long. The reasons why heaven and earth are able to endure and continue thus long is because they do not live of or for themselves. This is how they are able to continue and endure. Therefore the sage puts his own person last, and yet it is found in the foremost place. He treats his person as if it were a foreign to him, and yet the person is preserved. It is not because he has no personal and private ends that therefore such ends are realized. The highest excellence is like that of water. The excellence of water appears in the benefiting of all things, and in its occupying without striving to the contrary the low place which all men dislike. Hence its way is near to that of the Tao. The excellence of a residence is in the suitability of the place. That of the mind is in an abysmal stillness. That of associations is in their being with the virtuous. That of government is in its securing good order. That of conduct of affairs in its ability. And that of the initiation of any movement is in its timeless, uh, timeliness. And when one with the highest excellence does not wrangle about his low prop position, no one finds fault with him. It is better to leave a vessel unfulfilled than to attempt to carry it when it is full. If you keep feeling a point that has been sharpened, the point cannot long preserve its sharpness. When gold and jade fill the hall, their possessor cannot keep them safe. When wealth and honors lead to arrogancy, this brings its evil on itself. When the work is, is done and one's name is becoming distinguished, to withdraw in obscurity is the way of heaven. When the intelligent and animal souls are held together in one embrace, they can be kept from separating. When one gives undivided attention to the vital breath and brings it to the utmost degree of uh, pliancy, he can become as a tender babe. When he has cleansed away the most mysterious sights of his imagination, he can become without a flaw. In loving the people and ruling the state, cannot he proceed without any purpose of action? In the opening and shutting of his gates of heaven, cannot he do as a female bird? Which his intelligence reaches in every direction, cannot he appear to be without knowledge? The Tao produces all things and nourishes them. It produces them and does not claim them as its own. It does all, and yet it does not boast of it. It presides over all, and yet it does not control them. This is what is called the mysterious quality of the Tao. The thirty, the thirty spokes unite in one nave, but it is on empty on the empty space of the axle. The use of the wheel depends. Clay is fashioned into vessels, but it is on their empty hollowness that their use depends. The door and windows are cut out from the walls. To form an apartment, but it is on the empty space within that its use depends. Therefore, what has a positive existence serves for profitable adaptation, and what has not for actual useness. Colors, five hues from the eyes their sight will take. Music, five notes, the ears as deaf can make. The flavors, five, deprive the mouth of taste. The chariot, of course, and the wild hunting waste. Make mad the mind, and objects rare and strange. Soft for men's conduct, will to evil change. Therefore the sage seeks to satisfy the craving of the belly, and not the insatiable longing of the eyes. He puts from him the latter, and prefers to seek the former. Favor and disgrace would seem equally to be feared, honor and great calamity to be regarded as personal conditions of the same kind. What is meant by speaking thus of favor and disgrace? Disgrace is being in a low position, after the enjoyment of favor. The, the getting that favor leads to the apprehension of losing it, and the losing it leads to the fear of still getting a uh, greater calamity. That is what is meant by saying that favor and disgrace would seem equally to be feared. And what is it meant by saying that honor and great calamity are to be similarly regarded as personal conditions? What makes me liable to great calamity is my having the body which I call myself. If I had not the body, what great calamity could come to me? Therefore, he would administer the kingdom. Honoring it as he honors his own person, 
may be employed to govern it, and he who would administer it with the love which he bears to his own person may be entrusted with it. We look at it, and we do not see it, and we name it the equilable. We listen to it, and we do not hear it, and we name it the inaudible. We try to grasp it, and do not get hold of it, and we name it the subtle. With these three qualities, it cannot be made the subject of description, and hence we blend them together and obtain the one. Its upper part is not bright, and its lower part is not obscure. Ceaseless in its action, it is yet, uh, yet cannot be named, and then it again returns and becomes nothing. This is called the form of the formless, and the semblance of the invisible. This is called the fleeting and ind indeterminable. We meet it and do not see its front. We follow it and do not see its back. When we lay hold of the Tao of old to direct the things of the present day and are able to know it as, the, uh, as was in old in the beginning, this is called unwinding the clue of Tao. The skillful masters of the Tao in old times with a subtle and exquisite penetration comprehended its mysteries and were deep also, so as were they to allude to men's knowledge. As they were thus beyond men's knowledge, I will make an effort to describe of what sort they appeared to be. Shrinking uh, looked they like those who wade through a stream in winter, irresolute like those who are afraid of all around them, grave like a guest in awe of his host, uh, like ice that is melting away, unpretentious like wood that has not been fashioned into anything, vacant like a valley, and dull like muddy water. Who can make the muddy water clear? Let it be still, and it gradually become clear. Who can secure the condition of rest? Let the movement go on, and the condition of rest will gradually arise. They who preserve this method of the Tao do not wish to be full of themselves. It is through their not being full of themselves they can afford to seem worn and not appear new and complete. The state of vacancy should be brought to the utmost degree, and that of stillness guarded with unwearing vigor. All things alike go through their process of activity, and then we see them in return to their original state. When things in the vegetable world have displayed their luxuriant growth, we see each of them return to its root. This returning to the root is what we call the state of stillness, and that stillness may be called a reporting that they have fulfilled their appointed end. The report of that fulfillment is the regular unchanging rule. To know that unchanging rule is to be intelligent. Not to know its end, not to know it leads to wild movements and evil issues. The knowledge of that unchanging rule pr produces a grand capacity and forbearance, and that capacity and forbearance lead to a community of feeling with all things. From this community of feeling comes a kingliness of character, and he who is a king like goes on to be heaven-like. In that likeness to heaven he possesses the Tao. Possessed of the Tao he endures long, and to the end of his bodily life is exempt from all danger of decay. In the highest antiquity the people do not know that there were their rulers. In the next age they loved them and praised them. In the next they feared them. In the next they despised them. Thus it was when faith in the Tao was deficient, when the rulers, a want of faith in them, ensued in the people. How irresolute did those earliest rulers appear, showing by their recidence the importance which they set upon their words. Their work was done, and their understandings were successful, while the people all said, We are as we are, of ourselves. When the great Tao, the way of method, ceased to be observed, benevolence and righteousness came into vogue. Then appeared wisdom and shrewdness, and there ensued great hypocrisy. When harmony no longer prevailed throughout the six kinships, filial sons found their manifestations when the states and clans fell into disorder. Loyal ministers appeared. If we could renounce our sageness and discard our wisdom, it would be better for the people a hundredfold. If we could renounce our benevolence and discard our righteousness, the people would again become filial and kindly. It could be if we could renounce our artful contrivances and discard our scheming for gain, there would be no thieves nor robbers. Those three methods of government thought older, thought older ways and elegance did fail, and made these names their want of worth to veil. But simple views and courses plain and true, with selfish ends and many lusts eschew. When we renounce learning, we have no troubles. Those are the ready yes and flattering yea. Small is the difference they display, but mark their issues in good ill. 
what space the gulf between the fall ill. With all men, fear is indeed to be feared, but how wide and without end is the range of questions asking to be discussed. The multitude of men look satisfied and pleased, as if enjoying a full banquet, as if mounted on a tower in spring. I alone seem listless and still, my desires having as yet given no indication of their presence. I am like an infant which has not yet smiled. I look dejected and forlorn, as if I had no home to go to. The multitude of men all have enough and to spare. I alone seem to have lost everything. My mind is that of a stupid man. I am in a state of chaos. Ordinary men look bright and intelligent, while I alone seem to be blighted, benighted. They look full of discrimination, while I alone am of dull and confused. I seem to be carried about as on the sea, drifting as if I had nowhere to rest. All men have their sphere of action, while I alone seem dull and incapable like a rude borderer. Thus I am different from other men, but I value the nurturing mother, the Tao. The grandest forms of active force from Tao come their only source. Who can of Tao the nature tell, our sight it flies, our touch as well? In looting so, uh, sl sight, eluding touch, the forms of things all in its crutch. Eluding touch, eluding sight, there are their semblances all right. Profound it is, dark and obscure, things, essences, all there endure. Those essences, the truth, unfold of what? When seen, shall we be told, now of what uh, it is told, now it is so, twas so of old. Its name, what passes not away, so in their beautiful array, things from and never now decay. How now I that is oh wait how now I that is with all the beauties of existing things by this the nature of the Tao. The partial becomes incomplete, the crooked straight, the empty full, the worn out few. He who desires our uh, our few gets them. He who desires our many goes astray. Therefore the sage holds in his embrace the one thing of humility and manifests it to all the world. He is free from self-display and therefore shines from self-assertion and therefore he is distinguished from self-boasting and therefore his merit is acknowledged from self-capacity and therefore he acquires superiority. It is because he thus is free from striving that therefore no one in the world is able to strive with him. That saying of the ancients that the partial becomes complete was not vainly spoken. All real completion is comprehended under it. Abstaining from speech marks him who is obeying the spontaneity of his nature. A violent wind does not last for a whole morning. A sudden rain does not last for the whole day. To whom it is that these two things are owing? To heaven and earth? If heaven and earth cannot make much sp uh, spasmodic actings last long, how much less can man? Therefore, when one is making the Tao his business, those who are also pursuing it agree with him, and those who are making the manifestations of its course, their object, agree with him in that. While even those who are failing in both these things agree with him when they fail. Hence those with whom he agrees as to the Tao have the happiness of attaining to it. Those with whom he agrees as to the manifestation have the happiness of attaining to it. And those with whom he agrees in their failure also have the happiness of attaining to the Tao. But when there is no faith sufficient on his part, a want of faith in him ensures on the part of the others. He who stands on his tiptoes does not stand firm. He who stretches his legs does not walk easily. So he who displays himself does not shine. He who dis asserts himself on views not distinguished. He who vaunts himself, does not find his merit acknowledged, he who is self-conceited has no superiority allowed to him. Such conditions viewed from the standpoint of the Tao are like remnants of food, or a tumor on the body, which all dislike. Hence, those who pursue the course of the Tao do not adopt and allow them. There was something undefined and complete coming into existence before heaven and earth. How still it was and formless, standing alone, and under ongoing, no change, reaching everywhere and in no danger of being exhausted. It may be regarded as the mother of all things. I do not know its name, and I give it the designation of the Tao, the way or course. Making an effort, an effort further to give it the name, I call it the Great. Great it passes on in constant flow. Passing on, it becomes remote. Having become remote, it returns. Therefore, the Tao is great. 
Heaven is great. Earth is great. And the Sage King is also great. In the universe, there are four that are great, and the Sage King is one of them. Man takes his law from the Earth. The Earth takes its law from Heaven. Heaven takes its law from the Tao. The law of the Tao is its being what it is. Gravity is the root of lightness, stillness, the ruler of movement. Therefore, a wise presence marching the whole way does not go far from his baggage wagons. Although he may have brilliant prospects to look at them, he quietly remains in his proper place indifferently to them. How should the lord of a myriad chariots carry himself differently or lightly before the kingdom? If he do, if he do act lightly, he has lost his foot of gravity before the kingdom. If he act, do act lightly, he has lost his root of gravity. If he proceed to act movement, to act of movement, he will lose his throne. The skillful traveler leaves no traces or footsteps. The skillful speaker says nothing he can be, fa can be found fault or blamed. The skillful reckoner uses no tallies. The skillful cl closer needs no bolts or bars, while to open what he has shut will be impossible. The skillful binder uses no strings or knots, while to unloose what he has bound will be impossible. In the same way, the sage is always skillful at saving men. And so he does not cast away man. He is always skillful at saving things, and so he does not cast away anything. This is called hiding the light of this procedure. Therefore, the man of skill is a master to be looked up to. By him who has not the skill, and he who is not the skill and the helper of the reputation of, him who has the skill. If the one did not honor his master, and the other did not rejoice in the helper and observer, though intelligent, might greatly err about them. This is called the utmost degree of mystery. We know his manhood strength, yet still his female feebleness maintains. As the one channel flow the many drains, all come to him, yea, all beneath the sky. Thus he, the constant excellence, remains, the simple child again, free from all stains. Who knows how white attracts, yet always keep himself with black shades, the pattern of humility displayed. Displayed in view of all beneath the sky, he in the unchanging excellence arrayed, endless return to man's first state has made. He knows how glory shines, yet loves disgrace, nor for its pale, behold his presence in a spacious veil, to which men come from all beneath the sky, the unchanging excellent completes its tale. The simple infant man in him we hail, the wrought material, when divided and undistributed, forms vessels. The sage, when employed, becomes the head of all officers of government, and in his greatest regulation, he employs no violent measures. If anyone should wish to be the kingdom, uh, the kingdom for himself, and to effect this by what he does, I see that he will not succeed. The kingdom is a spirit-like thing, and cannot go by acting by act of doing. He would, uh, he who would so win it destroys it. He who would hold it in his grasp loses it. The course and nature of things is such that what is in front of it is now behind. What warned anon we, f uh, we freezing find, strength is of weakness of the spoil, the store in ruins mocks our toil. Hence the sage puts away effect, uh, excessive effort, extravagance, and easy indulgence. He who would assist a lord of men in harmony with the Tao will not assert his mastery in the kingdom by force of arms. Such a course is sure to meet with its proper return. Whenever a host is stationed, briars and thorns spring up. In the sequence of great armies, there are sure to be bad years. A skillful commander strikes a decisive blow and stops. He does not dare by consul uh, con continuing his operations to assert and complete his mastery. He will strike the blow, but will be on guard against being vain or boastful or arrogant in consequence of it. He strikes it as a matter of necessity. He strikes it but not from a wish of mastery. When things have attained their strong maturity, they become old. This may be said to be not in accordance with the Tao, and what is not in accordance with it soon comes to an end. Now arms, however beautiful, are instruments of evil omen, hateful, it may be said, to all creatures. Therefore they who have the Tao do not like to employ them. The superior man ordinarily considers the left hand in the most honorable place, but in the time of war, the right hand. Those sharp weapons are 
are instruments of evil omen, and not the instruments of the superior man. He uses them only on the uh, compulsion of necessity. Calm and repose are what he prizes. The victory by force of arms is to be him undesirable. To consider this undesirable would be a delight in the slaughter of men, and he who delights in the slaughter of men cannot get his will in the kingdom. On occasions of festivity, he be on the left hand in his prized position. On occasions of mourning, the right hand. The second in command of the army has his place in the left. The general commanding in chief has his own right, his place, that is, assigned to him as in the rights of mourning. He who has killed multitudes of men should weep for them with the bitterest grief, and the victor in battle has his high place rightly according to those rights. The Tao. Consider it as unchanging has no name. Though in its primordial simplicity it may be small, the whole world dares not deal with one embodying it as a minister. It is a feudal prince, so the king could guard and hold it. All would spontaneously submit themselves to him. Heaven and earth under its guidance unite together and send down the sweet dew, which, without the directions of men, it reaches equally everywhere as of its own accord. As soon as it proceeds to action, it has a name. When it, com when in it once has that name, men can now know the rest in it. When they know the rest in it, they can be free from all risk of failure and error. The relation of the Tao to all the world is like that of the great rivers and seas, and to the streams and from the valleys. He who knows other men is discerning. He who knows himself is intelligent. He who knows others is strong. He who overcomes himself is mighty. He who is satisfied with his lot is rich. He who goes on acting... Oh, hold on one second. Okay. He who goes on acting... Uh, do 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 strong... Uh, he who goes on acting with energy has a firm will. He who does not fail in his requirements of his position continues long. He who dies and yet does not perish has longevity. All pervading is the great Tao. It may be found on the left hand or on the right. All things depend on it for production, which it gives to them, not one refusing obedience to it. When it works as if what it's accomplished, it does not claim the name of the having done it. It closes all things as with a great garment, it makes it no makes no assumption of being their lord. Being, it may be named in the smallest things. All things return to their root and disappear, and do not know that it is which presides over their doing so. It may be named in the greatest things. Hence the sage is able in the same way to accomplish his great achievements. It is through his not making himself great that he can accomplish them. To him who holds in his hands the great image of the invisible Tao, the whole world re uh, repairs. Men resort to him, and resolve no hurt, but find rest, peace, and the feeling of ease. Music and dainties will make the passing quest stop for a time. But though the Tao as it comes from the mouth seems insipid and has no flavor, though it seems not without being looked at or listened to, the use of it is inexhaustible. When one is about to take an inspiration, he is sure to make a previous expiration. When he is going to weaken another, he will first strengthen him. When he is going to overthrow another, he will first have raised him. When he is going to despoil another, he will first have made gifts to him. This is called hiding the light of his procedure. The soft overcomes the hard and the weak the strong. Fishes should not be taken from the deep. Instruments for the profit of a state should not be shown to the people. The Tao in its regular course does nothing for the sake of doing it. And so there is nothing which it does not do. If princes and kings were able to maintain it, all things would of themselves be transformed by them. If this transformation became to be an object of desire, I would express the desire by the nameless simplicity. Simplicity without a name is free from all external aim. With no desire, at rest and still, all things go right as their will. Those who possessed in the highest degree the attributes of the Tao did not seek to, full, to show them, and therefore they possessed them in fullest measure. Those who possessed in a, sh a lower degree those attributes sought how not to lose them, and therefore they do not possess them in fullest measure. Those who possessed in the highest degree those attributes did nothing with a purpose, and had no need to do anything uh, to do anything. Those who possessed them in the lower degree were always doing and had no need to be doing. So doing. Those who possessed the highest 
benevolence were always seeking to carry it out and had no need to be doing so. Those who possessed the highest righteousness were always seeking to carry it out and had no and had need to be doing. Those who possessed this highest sense of propriety were always seeking to show it. And when men did not respond to it, they barred the arm and marched up to them. Thus it was that when the Tao was lost, its attributes appeared. When its attributes were lost, benevolence appeared. When benevolence was lost, righteousness appeared. And when righteousness was lost, the proprieties appeared. Now prosperity is the attenuated form of leal heartiness and good faith. It is always the commencement of disorder. Swift apprehension is only a flower of the Tao and is the beginning of stupidity. Thus it is that the great man abides by what is solid and ensues what is flimsy, dwells with the fruit and not with the flower. It is thus that he puts away the one and makes the choice of the other. The things which form from an old have come to the one of the Tao are heaven which is by bright and pure, earth rendered thereby firm, firm and sure, spirits with powers by it supplied, valleys kept full throughout their void, all creatures, uh, throughout their, uh, all creatures, which through it, it do live, princes and kings who come to get the model which they all give. All of these are results of the one Tao. If heaven were not thus pure, it soon would rend. If earth was not sure, twould break and bend. Without these powers, the spirit soon would prevail. It is not fulfilled; the dreadful would parch each veil. Without the lie of creatures, would pass away. Princes and kings without that moral sway, however grand and high, would all decay. Thus it is that dignity finds its firm root in the previous meanness, and what is lofty finds its stability in the lowness from which it rises. Hence princes and kings call themselves orphans, men of small virtue, and as carriages without an ave. It is not this is is not this an acknowledgment that they are considering themselves when they see the foundation of their dignity? So it is that the enumeration of the different parts of the carriage we do not come on what makes it answer the ends of a carriage. They do not wish to show themselves elegant-looking as jade, but prefer to be coarse-looking as an ordinary stone. Pete Buttigieg. The, moment, the movement of the Tao, by contrast, proceeds, and weaknesses mark the course of the Tao's mighty deeds. All things under heaven sprang from it, as, as existing, a name that existence sprang from, it is it as non-existence and not named. Scholars of the highest class, when they hear about the Tao, earnestly carry it into practice. Scholars of the middle class, when they have heard about it, seem now to keep it in, and now to lose it. Scholars of the lowest class, when they have heard about it, laugh greatly at it. If it were not thus laughed at, it would not be fit to be the Tao. Therefore, the sentence makers have thus expressed themselves. The Tao, when brightest brightness men seems like to lack, who progress in it makes seems drawing back. Its even its even way is like a rugged track. Its highest virtue from the veil doth rise. Its greatest beauty seems to offend the eyes. And he who has most, whose the uh, the le whose lot the least supplies, its firmest virtue seems but poor and low. Its solid truth seems to change to undergo. Its largest square doubt yet no corner show. A vessel great, it is the slowest made. Loud is its sound, but never what it said. A semblance great, the shadow of a shade. The Tao is hidden and has no name. But it is the Tao which is skillful and at imparting to all things what they need and making them complete. The Tao produced one. One produced two, two produced three, three produced all things. All things leap behind the obscurity out of which they have come, and go forward to embrace the brightness into which they have emerged, while they are harmonized by the breath of vacancy. What men dislike is to be orphans, to have little virtue, to be as carriages without names, and yet these are designated which kings and princes use for themselves. So it is that things are increased by being diminished, and others are diminished by being increased. What other men thus teach, I also teach. The violent and strong do not die their natural death. I will make it the basis of my teaching. The softest thing in the world dashes against the and overcomes the hardest. That which has no substantial existence enters where there is no crevice. I know hereby, I know hereby what advantage belongs to doing nothing with a purpose. 
These, there are a few in the world who attain to the teaching without words, and the advantage arising from non-action. Or fame of life, which, which do you hold more dear? Or life of wealth, to which would you adhere? Keep life and lose those other things. Keep them and lose your life, which belongs, sorrow and pain from uh, more near. Thus we, thus we may see, he, uh, who cleaves the flame, rejects what is more great, who loves larger stores, gives up the rich, richer slate, state, who is current, needs fear no shame, who knows to stop, incurs no blame, from danger free, long live shall be, he, he who thinks his great achievements poor, shall find his vigor long endure, of great fullness, deemed a void, exhaustion nearer, shall stem the tide, do thou what straight still crooked deem, thy greatest art still stupid seem, and eloquence a stammering scream. Constant action overcomes cold, being still overcomes heat. Purity and stillness gives the correct law to all under heaven. When the Tao prevails in the world, they send back their swift horses to draw the dung carts. When the Tao is disgraced in the world, the war horses breed in the borderlands. There is no guilt greater than the sanction to ambition. No calamity greater than to be disconnected with one's lot. No fault greater than the wish to be getting. Therefore, the sufficiency of contentment is an enduring and unchanging sufficiency. Without going outside his door, one understands all that takes place under the sky. Without looking from his window, one sees the Tao of Heaven. The farther that one goes from himself, the less he knows. Therefore, the sages got, got their knowledge without traveling gave their right names to things without seeing them, and accomplished their ends without any purpose of doing so. He who devotes himself to learning seeks from day to day to increase his knowledge. He who devotes himself to the Tao seeks from day to day to diminish his doing. He diminishes it and again diminishes it, still he strives to do, no uh, do doing nothing to on purpose. Having arrived at this point of non-action, there is nothing which he does not do. He who gets as his own all under heaven does so by giving himself no trouble with that end. If one makes trouble with that end, he is not equal to getting as his own as his own all under heaven. The sage has no invariable mind of his own. He makes the mind of the people his mind. Those who are good to, to me, I am good. And those who are not good to me, I am also good. And thus all get to be good. To those who are sincere with me, I am sincere. And to those who are not sincere with me, I am also sincere, and thus all get to be sincere. The sage has in the world an appearance of indecision, and keeps his mind in a state of indifference to all. The people all keep their eyes and ears directed to him, and he deals with them as, as all as his children. Similar to Jesus Christ, for example, or the Buddha. Men come forth and live, they enter again and die. Of every ten, three are ministers of life to themselves. And there, and three are ministers of death. There are also three in every ten whose aim is to live, but whose movements tend to land or place of death. And for what reason? Because of their accession endeavors to perpetuate life. But I have heard that he who is skillful in managing the life entrusted to him for a time travels in the land without having to shun rhinoceros or tiger, and enters a host without having to avoid buff coat or sharp weapon. The rhinoceros finds no place for him into which the thrust horn, nor the tiger a place in which to fix its claws, nor the weapon a place to admit its point. And for what reason? Because there is no place to him but death. All things are produced by the Tao, and nourished by its outflowing operation. They receive their forms according to the nature of each, and are completed according to their circumstances of their condition. Therefore all things without exception honor the Tao, and exalt its overflowing operation. Thus, honoring of the Tao and exalting of its operation is not the result of any ordination, but always a spontaneous tribute. Thus it is that the Tao produces all things, nourishes them, brings them to their full growth, nurses them, completes them, matures them, maintains them, and overspreads them. It produces them and makes no claim to the possession of them. It carries them through their uh, processes and does not vaunt its ability to do in doing so. It brings them to maturity and exercises no control over them. This is called its mysterious operation. 
The Tao, which originated all under the sky, is to be considered as the mother of them all. When the mother is found, we know that her children should be. When one knows what that she is the mother's child and proceeds to guard the qualities of the mother that belong to him, to the end of his life he will be free from all peril. Let him keep his mouth closed and shut up the portals of his nostrils. In all of his life he will be exempt from laborious exertion. Let him keep his mouth open and spend his breath in the promotion of his affairs, and all his life there will be uh, no safety for him. The perception of what is small and what is of secret clear-sightedness, that guarding of what is soft and tender is the secret of strength. Who uses well is light, reverting to its source so bright. Will from his body uh, ward all bright, and hides the unchanging from men's sight. If I were suddenly to become known and to put it into position, to conduct a government according to the great Tao, what I should be most afraid of would be a boastful display. The great Tao or way is very level and easy, but people love the byways. Their courtyards and buildings shall be uh, well kept, by their field their fields shall be ill cultivated, and their grain granaries very empty. They shall wear elegant and ornamented robes, carry a sharp sword at their girdle, pamper themselves in eating and drinking, and have a, a, a superabundance of a property and wealth. Such princes may be called robbers and boasters. This is contrary to the Tao, surely. What Tao's skillful planter plants can never be untorn. What his skillful arms unfold from him can never be born. Sun shall bring his lingering line, sacrifices to his shrine. Tao and nurse within oneself, his vigor will make true. And where the family rules, what riches will accrue? The neighborhood where it prevails, its thriving will abound, and when it seems throughout the state, good fortune will be found. Employ in the kingdom more, and men thrive all around. In this way the effect will be seen in the person, by the observation of the different cases in the family, in the neighborhood, in the state, and in the kingdom. How do I know that this effect is sure to hold thus all under the sky? By this method of observation, he who has himself ab uh, abundantly the attributes of the Tao is like an infant. Pot poisonous insects will not sting him. Fierce beasts will not seize him. Birds of prey will not strike him. The infant's bones are weak and its sinews soft, but yet its grasp is firm. It knows not yet the union of male and female, and yet its virile member may be ex excited, showing the perfection of its physical essence. All day long it will cry without its throat becoming hoarse showing the harmony in its constitution. Him by whom his honorary is known, the secret of the unchanging Tao is shown, and in un knowledge wisdom finds its throne. All life in increasing arts to evil turn, where the mind makes the vital breath to burn. False is the strength, and o'er to where it should mourn. When things have overcome, when things have become strong, they then become old, which may be said to be contrary to the Tao. Whatever is contrary to the Tao soon ends. He who knows the Tao does not care to speak about it. He who is ever to read to speak about it does not know. He who knows it will keep his mouth shut and close the portals of his nostrils. He will blunt his sharp points and unravel the complications of things. He will temper his brightness and bring himself into agreement with the obscurity of others. This is called the mysterious agreement. Such as one cannot be treated fami uh, familiarly or distantly, he is beyond all consideration of profit or injury, of nobility or meanness. He is the noblest man under heaven. A state may be ruled by measures of correction. Weapons of war may be used with crafty dexterity, but the kingdom is made on one's own only by freedom from action and purpose. How do I know that this is so? By these facts. In the kingdom, the multiplication of prohibitive enactments increases the poverty of the people. The more implements to add to their profit that the people have, the greater disorder is there in the state and clan. The more acts of crafty dexterity that men possess, the more do strange contrivances appear. The more display there is of legislation, the more thieves and robbers there are. Therefore, a sage has said, I will do nothing of purpose, and the people will be transformed of themselves. I will be fond of keeping still, and the people will of themselves become correct. I will take no trouble about it, and the people will of themselves become rich. I will manifest no ambition, and the people of themselves attain to the primitive simplicity. Uh, this is uh, largely what Murray Rothbard liked about Taoism. Uh, famous uh, libertarian. 
The government that seems the most unwise, oft goodness to be the people best supplies. That which is meddling, touching everything, will work but ill, and disappointing bring. Misery, happiness is to be found by its side. Happiness, misery lurks beneath it. Who knows what either will come to its end? Shall we then dispense with correction? The method of correction shall be a turn become distortion, and the good in it shall be by a turn evil. The dissolution of the people on this point has indeed subsisted for a, for a long time. Therefore the sage is like a square which cuts no one with its angles, like a corner which injures no one with its sharpness. He is straightforward, but allows himself no license. He is bright, but it does not dazzle. For regulating the human in our constitution and rendering the proper service to the heavenly, there is nothing like moderation. It is only by its moderation that there is effected a return to the man's normal state. That early man is what I call the repeated accumulation of the attributes of the Tao. With that repeated accumulation of those attributes, there comes the subjugation of every obstacle to such return. Of this subjugation, we do not, we do not what shall be the limit. And when one knows not what the limit shall be, he may be the ruler of a state. He who possesses the mother of, a st of the state may be continu uh, continue long. His case is like that of the plant, of which we say that its roots are deep and its flower stalks firm. This is the way to secure what is enduring life, well, uh, what, uh, that its enduring life shall long be seen. Um... Governing a great state is like cooking a small fish. Let the kingdom be governed according to the Tao, and the manes of the departed will not manifest their spiritual energy. It is not that throw those manes have not the spiritual energy, but it is, but it will not be employed to hurt men. It is not that it could not hurt men, but neither does the ruler, ruling sage, hurt them. When these two do not injuriously affect the other, their good influences converge in their virtue of the Tao. What makes a great state in its being like a low-lying, down-flowing stream, it becomes the center to which tend all the small states under heaven. To illustrate from the case of the females, the female always overcomes the male by her stillness. Stillness may be considered a sort of abasement. Thus it is a great state by con uh, condescending to small states, gains them for itself, and that small states, by abasing themselves to a great state, win it over them. In the one case, the abasement leads to attaining ad uh, adherence, in the other case, to procuring favor. The great state shall only wish to unite men together and nourish them. A small state only wishes to receive by and to nourish the other. Each gets what it desires, but the great state must learn to abase itself. Tao is, of all things, the most honored place. No treasures give good men so rich a grace, bad men it guards, and doubt their ill efface. Its admirable words can purchase honor. Its admirable deeds can raise their performer above others. Even men who are not good are not abandoned by it. Therefore, when the sovereign occupies his place as the son of heaven, and he is appointed by his three ducal ministers, though a prince were to send in a round of symbol, uh, a round symbol of rank large enough to fill both his hands, and that his precursor of the team of horses in the courtyard, such an offering would not be equal to the lesson of the Tao, which one might present on his knees. Why was it that the ancients prized this Tao so much? Was it not because it could be got by seeking for it, and the guilty could escape from the stain of their guilt by it? This is the reason why all under heaven consider it the most valuable thing. It is the way of the Tao to act without thinking of acting, to conduct affairs without feeling the trouble of them, to taste without discerning any flavor, to consider what is small as great, and a few as many, and to recompense injury with kindness. The master of it anticipates things that are different, while they are easy, and does not and does and does things that would become great while they are small. All difficult things in the world are sure to arise from a previous state in which they were easy, and all great things from ones which they were small. Therefore the sage, while he never goes what is, uh, does what is great, is able on one account to accomplish the greatest things. He who lightly prom promises is sure to keep but little faith. He who is continually thinking things easy is sure to find them difficult. 
Therefore, the sage, uh, therefore the sage sees difficulty even in what seems easy, and so never has any difficulties. That which is the rest is easily kept of a uh, hold of. The four thing has given identic uh, identifications of its presence. It is easy to take measures against it. That which is brittle is easily broken. That which is very small is easily dispersed. Action should be taken before a thing has been made in appearance. Order should be secured before disorder has begun. The tree which fills the arms grew from the tiniest sprout. The tower of the nine straws rose from a small heap of earth. The journey of a thousand li commenced with a single step. He who acts with an ulterior purpose does not harm. He who takes hold of a thing in the same way loses his mind, his hold. The sage does not act so, and therefore does not harm. He does not lay so, and therefore he does not lose his bold. But people in their conduct of affairs are constantly ruining them when they say when they are on the eve of success. If they were careful at the end, they would be. Sh they should be sure at the beginning. They would attain. They would not so ruin them. Therefore the sage requires, desires what other men do not desire, and does not prize things difficult to get. He learns what other men do not learn, and turns back to what the multitude of men have passed by. Thus he helps the natural development of all things, and does not dare to act with an ulterior purpose on his own. The ancients who showed their skill in practicing the Tao did, not, uh, did so not to enlighten the people, but rather to make them simple and ignorant. Difficult in, the difficulty in governing the people arises from their having knowledge. He who tries to govern a state by his wisdom is a scourge to it, while he who does not try to does do so is a blessing. He who knows these two things finds in them also his model and rule. Ability to know this model and rule constitutes what we call the mysterious excellence of a governor. Deep and far-reaching in such mysterious excellence showing indeed its possessor as opposite to others, but leading them to a great conformity to him. That whereby the rivers and seas are able to receive the homage and tribute of a valley of streams is their skill being lower than they. It is thus that they are the kings of themselves, of the kings of them all. So it must be that the sage ruler, wishing to be above men, puts himself by the words below them, and wishing to be before them, places his person behind them. In this way, though he has his place above them, men do not feel his weight, nor, did, uh, nor though he has a place before them. Hey, Tika. Uh, do they feel it an injury to them? Therefore all in the world delight to exalt him and do not weary of him. Because he does not strive, no one finds it possible to strive with him. All the world says that while my Tao is great, it appears to be superior to other systems of teaching. Nor it is just its greatness that makes it seem to be inferior. If it were like any other system, for long would its smallness have been known. But I have three precious things which I prize and hold fast. The first is gentleness, the second is economy, and the third is shrinking from taking uh, precedence of others. With that gentleness I can be bold. With that economy I can be liberal. Shrinking from taking procedure of others... I can become a vessel of the highest honor. Nowadays they give up gentleness and are able for being bold, economy, and are all for being liberal, the hindmost place, and seek only the foremost of all, which the end is, death. Gentleness is sure to be virtuous even in battle, and firmly to maintain its guard, its ground. Heaven will save its possessor by its very gr uh, gentleness, protecting him. He who endows wars has skill, assumes no martial port. He who fights with most good will to rage makes no resort. He who vanquishes yet still keeps from his foes apart. He who hests men most fulfill yet humbly plies his art. Thus we say, here and here contends, and therein his might. Thus we say, men's will he bends, that he will unite. Thus we say, like heavens his ends, no sage of one more bright. A master of the art of war has said, I do not dare to be the host to commence the war. I prefer to be the guest to act on the defensive. I do not dare to advance an inch. I prefer to retire a foot. This is called marshalling the ranks where there are no ranks, bearing the arms to fight where there are no arms to bear, grasping the weapon where there is no weapon to grasp, advancing against the enemy where there is no enemy. 
There is no calamity greater than lightly engaging in war. To, to, to do that is near losing the gentleness, which is now precious. Thus it is that when opposing weapons are actually crossed, he who deplores the situation conquers. My words are very easy to know, very easy to practice, but there is no one in the world who is able to know and able to practice them. There is an originating and all-comprehending principle in my words and in an authoritative law for all things which I enforce. It is because they all uh, they do not know these that men do not know me. They who know me are few, and I am on the account the more to be prized. It is thus that the sage wears a poor garb of hair cloth while he carries a signet of jade in his bosom. To know and yet think we do not know is the highest attainment. Not to know and yet think we do not know is a disease. It is simply by being pained at the thought of having this disease that we are preserved from it. The sage is not the disease. He knows the pain that would be inseparable from it and therefore he does not have it. When the people do not fear what they ought to fear, that which is their greatest uh, dread will come on them. Let them not thoughtlessly indulge themselves in their ordinary life. Let them not act as if, they, as if weary of what, is, uh, of what life depends on. It is by avoiding such indulgence that such weariness does not arise. Therefore the sage knows these things of himself, but does not parade his knowledge, loves but does not appear to uh, to set a value on himself, and thus he puts the latter alternative away and makes choice of the former. He whose boldness appears in his daring to do wrong and indifference of the laws is put to death. He whose boldness appears in his not daring to do so lives on. Of these two cases, the one appears to be advantageous and the other to be injurious. But, when heaven's anger smites a man, who the cause shall truly scan? On this account, the sage feels a difficulty as to what to do in the former case. It is the way of heaven not to strive, and yet it skillfully overcomes not to speak, and yet it's skillful in obtaining a reply does not call, and yet men come to it themselves. Its demonstrations are quiet, and yet its plans are skillful and effective. Meshes of the net of heaven are large, far apart, but letting nothing escape. Uh, how many pages? Okay. The people do not fear death. To what purpose is, purpose is it to try to frighten them with death? The people were always in awe of death, and I could always seize them who do wrong, put them to death, who would dare do wrong. There is always one who presides over the infliction death. He who would inflict death in the room of him who presides over it may be described as hewing wood instead of a great carpenter. Seldom is it that he who undertakes the hewing instead of the great carpenter, does not cut his own hands. The people suffer from famine because of the multitude of taxes consumed by their superiors. It is through this that they suffer famine. People are difficult to govern because they are of, of the excessive agency of their superiors in governing them. It is though that this are, they are difficult to govern. People make light of dying because of the greatness of their labors and seeking for the means of living. It is which, what makes, them, uh, makes their light of dying. Thus it is that what they have is the subject of living altogether out of view is better than to uh, set a high value on it. Man at his birth is supple and weak, and at his death firm and strong. So it is with all things, trees and plants in their early growth are soft and brittle, at their death dry and withered. Thus it is that firmness and strength are the commitments of death, softness and weakness the commitments of life. Hence he who relies on the strength of his force does not conquer, and a tree which is strong will fill the outstretched arms and thereby invites the feller. Therefore the place of what is now firm and strong is below, and what is soft and weak is above. May not the way of the Tao of heaven be compared to the method of bending a bow? The part of the bow which was high and it's, it's brought low and so that it was raised up, so heaven diminishes where there is superabundance and supplements where there is deficiency. It is the way of heaven to diminish super, uh, superabundance and to supplement deficiency. It is not the way of man. It is not with the way of man. He takes away from those who have not enough to add to his own sub, uh, superabundance. 
he who cannot take his own superabundance and therewith uh, serve all under heaven, only he is in possession of, of the Tao. Therefore the ruling sage acts without claiming the results as his. He achieves his merit and does not rest arrogantly in it. He does not wish to display his superiority. There is nothing in the world more soft and weak than water. And yet, for attacking things that are firm and strong, there is nothing that can take procedure of it. For there is nothing so effectual for which it can be changed. Everyone in the world knows that the soft overcomes the hard, and the weak the strong. But no one is able to carry it out in practice. Therefore, a sage has said, he who accepts his state's reproach is hailed, therefore, in its altar's lord. To him who bears men's di uh, direful woes, they are the name of the king accord. Words that are strictly true seem to be paradoxical. When a reconciliation is effected between two parties, after a great animosity there is sure to be a grudge remaining in the mind of the one who was strong. And how can this be beneficial to the other? Therefore, to guard against this, the sage keeps the left-hand portion of the record of the engagement. And does not, uh, and does not insist on the speedy fulfillment of it by the other party. So he who has the attributes of the Tao regards only the conditions of the engagement, while he who has not yet the, uh, those attributes regards only the conditions favorable to himself. In the way of heaven, there is no partiality of love; it is always on the side of the good man. In a little state with a small population, I would I would so order it that though there were individuals with the abilities of of ten or a hundred men, there should be no employment of them. I would make the people, while holding on death as a grievous thing, yet not remove elsewhere to avoid it. Though they had boats and carriages, they should have no occasion to ride them. Though they had the buff coats and sharp weapons, they should have no occasion to don or use them. It would make the people return to the use of knotted cords instead of ridden characters. They should think their coarse fo uh, fo uh, food sweet, their plain clothes beautiful, their poor dwellings places of rest, and their common simple ways, ways sources of enjoyment. There should be a neighboring state within sight and the voices of the fowls and dogs should be heard all the way from it to us. But I shall make the purpose to old age, even to death, not to have any intercourse with it. Sincere words are not fine words. Are, uh, fa sincere words are not fine. Fine words are not sincere. Those who are, skillful, those who are skilled in the Tao do not dispute about it. The disputations are not skilled in it. Those who know the Tao are not extensively learned. The extensively learned do not know it. The sage does not accumulate for himself. The more that he extend, expends for others, the more does he possess of his own. The more that he gives to others, the more does he have himself. With all the sharpness of the way of heaven, it injures not. With all, with all the doing in the way of the sage, he does not strive.